Well, hello everybody. As uh, I told you a few weeks ago, uh, the next project was to build a tube super heterodyne receiver. Here it is, I built it and I'm quite impressed by the way it performs. Um, I will start a small presentation of this uh, tube radio receiver. On the left part of the image, you can see the transformer. It's a classical transformer with two uh, secondary windings. Uh, one is for the high voltage. It's delivering 100 volts, which is doubled here. You can see it's doubled. And in the final, uh, after uh, doubling uh, and uh, double rectification and filtering, uh, we will achieve around uh, 270, 280 volts. Um, and uh, the other one, the other winding is the filament winding. Well, for the filament winding, I choose to use um, tubes with the filament on series connection. Uh, that means the, the PAPA series, uh, the P series which requires uh, 300 mega uh, 300 milliamps uh, for the for the filament and they can be uh, connected in series connection as you can see this uh, uh, yellow wire uh, it's used uh, with that purpose it's me it's putting the filament uh, in series uh, from one tube to another and here it comes back to the transformer okay uh, the audio amplifier, it's uh, somehow unusual. It's an PCL85, Papa Charlie Lima 85 tube. It's a double tube, a triode pentode tube, uh, which is in charge with uh, audio frequency amplification, with the audio frequency amplifier. Um, here, your you can see the wires of the volume potentiometer, potentiometer. and uh, here you have the rectification. Uh, this, that's the, the rectifying diode, the glass rectifying diode, which is uh, connected at the exit of the last uh, intermediate frequency transformer. Um, at the output of the detector, uh, we have three exits, in the matter of fact. On this exit, you see it's connected the volume potentiometer, so it's the audio exit. You have a second exit which is not used in my, uh, in my radio. That is for driving a magic eye uh, tuning indicator, so you can do that too. And the third exit, you can see here, uh, with that uh, tiny, uh, tiny wire, uh, which goes at the first grid of the intermediate frequency amplifier tube, and at the first grid of the uh, heptode uh, at the input, it's, in the matter of fact, the automatic gain control uh, exit. The intermediate uh, frequency transformers are identical, even if they are uh, built using different color and mallet copper wires, they are identical. Uh, as you can see, uh, I think you can see in, 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 in the image, uh, they are using 270 uh, picofarad uh, capacitors on all the sides. So. Uh, they are identical, four identical windings, two by two, coupled uh, at a one centimeter distance. Uh, the support, the forming support, the plastic support is six millimeters diameter. And inside we have two cores. Every uh, part of the transformer has its own core. They are not mounted on the same core. So they can be tuned independently. Uh, the coupling is just uh, because they are one next to each other on the same axis. Uh, but there is not a common core for those, uh, for those um, 
for those uh, coils. And uh, the PCB, I think you can see there, there is a hole. Uh, there is a hole on the PCB to be able to adjust uh, the bottom coil. Uh, to find the optimum uh, for the 455 kilohertz uh, maximum, which is the intermediate frequency. Uh, tuning the intermediate frequency, it's quite simple. You just need to connect either an oscilloscope at that exit, just before the diode, and you're turning the, the course for maximum signal on the, um, on the oscilloscope, of course, for that tuning, you need to remove, to decouple this capacitor, which is the local oscillator capacitor. Other, otherwise, you will not uh, tune uh, by, the, by the 455 kilohertz, but you will tune for the local oscillator. So it's, it's totally different. You have to disable the local oscillator. You remove, you're removing one leg of this... Uh, uh, one terminal of this uh, capacitor, and you're injecting on the first grid, you're injecting a 455 kilohertz uh, using a signal generator, uh, which I have presented on, the, on another uh, film I made uh, with the uh, radio receiver Pescarouche. Uh, on my YouTube channel, you will find Pescarouche radio receiver, uh, which uh, shows the schematic of the of the signal generator I'm using. Um, so uh, the the coils are built on uh, plastic support uh, salvaged from old tube TVs. Uh, I don't know if you have seen such kind of coils. They are like that, and the input uh, when you're uh, opening it's something like this. It was used in Romanian uh, tube television sets, uh, which were built during the communist era. So, uh, uh, recovering uh, those, uh, those coils um, offered me support for this uh, intermediate frequency transformers. I know they should be, uh, they should be um, screened. They are not. I don't know why I couldn't figure out why. Uh, if I'm trying to screen them, the radio stops working. And it's not just detune, trust me, I know how to retune uh, an intermediate frequency transformer. It's not just detune, just stops working. I, I didn't really try to see what's happening. As long as it's working just fine like this, I just don't see the reason uh, to shield them uh, again, so I'm gonna let them like this and they are working absolutely fine. Uh, but shielding them, I tried many times, uh, just makes uh, the, the radio un, um, stop working. For the local oscillator, here it is, the local oscillator, you can see it there. Uh, I have used another coil salvaged for an old uh, transistor uh, radio set. It's a Selena uh, Soviet radio set. Um, it's a coil from that Selena. It's like this. It's having a ferrite surrounding the winding. This is not a, uh, an oscillator winding. I was using just the support, just the core and the support of the coil. Uh, and this can be removed. It's difficult to do it with one hand. And as you can see, the, the coil is like this. So uh, you can use it to build the um, local oscillator. I will uh, come back a little bit later in this uh, small movie with the details for each, uh, for each uh, coil. Uh, roughly uh, the intermediate frequency coils that you can see here, they are having 180 uh, turns, uh, which gives us around 412 uh, microhenry inductance. Uh, so um, uh, 180 turns. And uh, for the local oscillator, there are two coils. One has 120 turns, which give us um, 
177 microhenry uh, um, inductance, and the other one, the coupling uh, for the grid of the oscillator of the tri triode, oscillating triode, uh, is having 28 turns, um, which gives us uh, roughly 19, 20 microhenry. On this, uh, on this, uh, on this support, uh, which has ferrit adjusting ferrit two inside, of course, um, to be able to tune the receiver, uh, and the interior diameter, uh, the support diameter is 3.2 uh, millimeters. But you can use any other uh, support just to have that inductances. Uh, for the for the primary winding, 177 uh, microhenry, and for the secondary winding, around 1920 microhenry. Okay, uh, the intermediate frequency amplification is done using an EF80 tube, or in this image, it's an uh, EF. AF uh, Echo Foxtrot uh, 148 um, inter, um, pentode uh, uh, tube. Uh, so that's it. But AF uh, Echo Foxtrot 80 is just fine. It's working very fine. You can use it if you have it or uh, as I told you, uh, AF uh, Echo Foxtrot uh, 148. I, I hope I'm not uh, saying stupid things. Um, what I said, 48. F Echo Foxtrot 184. 184. Okay. Uh, and not 48, 184, Echo Foxtrot 184. I have somewhere 183 too. It should work, but I didn't test it. Those one, the AF80 and uh, AF184, uh, uh, I have tested them. And uh, the, the 184 is here on the, on the socket uh, at the moment. Uh, the input tube is an uh, Echo Charlie Hotel 84 HH Echo Charlie Hotel um, 84 tube. Uh, the triode is used as a local oscillator, and uh, the heptode is uh, it's making the mixer and um, the amplification uh, uh, of the first stage, the first stage amplification, RF amplification. Uh, that's the tube. The variable capacitor has two gangs uh, at the same uh, at the same capacity. It's salvaged for an old VEF Sigma uh, radio cassette receiver, uh, and the input coil. It's a standard medium wave uh, input coil, having uh, it has 85 turns uh, um, at the input at the grid of the tube, and it has four uh, windings at the antenna, which should be connected here on this uh, terminal. Um, as you may know, or if you are newer uh, or younger and you don't know, uh, the tube radio receiver almost always needed uh, an external uh, good antenna to be effective. So um, let's see how it performs, this, um, this tube radio receiver uh, right here. We're gonna try it before, we're gonna try it first, I mean, uh, without an external antenna, and then we'll come back with the external antenna. So let's turn on the heater. It starts heating. Well, how I love this glow box. They are called glow box too, yeah. I, at first I didn't know what glow box means. Um, electronic tube or glow bug. It's, uh, it's heating, as you can see, uh, on the ECL, on the, on the PCL 
uh, you can you can see it well. Yeah. It should start heating and yeah, as always I don't have a loudspeaker. It's just a, a primitive one. So let's see uh, how what we can pick without any antenna. I'll increase the volume a little bit. It's amazing for a tube radio receiver to receive so many stations with, without any antenna, just with that very small piece of ferrite uh, um, coil uh, and without the external antenna. It's, it's really amazing, I mean, it's, it's working perfectly. In, in my opinion, it's better than many other transistor radios. I, I managed to defocus it somehow. Okay, so I will come back in a second uh, with uh, an ex external antenna connected. Anyway, amazing how many stations it can pick up uh, just uh, uh, just with that small piece of ferret. That's why I, I, I didn't uh, use the larger ferret road because I was convinced that it won't work without an external antenna. So I'm very, very surprised. So I am back with uh, the antenna connected uh, to the input coil, as you can see there. So let's see what uh, uh, station can we pick uh, uh, on, this, uh, on this moment. So let's start. Polish station, where well, is the first time that I can pick a Polish station in medium waves? Surprising. Mm 
cele mai joase puncte ale istoriei poporului evreiei. Что расселяется больше, чем признается аварийным. Менструя, жилищный мукор. Вы слушали Трансветовое радио. Якщо ви бажаєте підтримати нас фінансово, або зробити вас у Бодрі та програмі на Хезболі, прелята з Агенції Інтернаціоналі Депреса. Вау! Спаніш стейшн! Що четверга о 10.10 на українському радіо. Україні! That's the Romanian national broadcasting. And this is Kossuth Radio Budapest. Uh, I think it's the strongest transmitter station, the strongest transmitting station in Europe, as far as I know. So that was amazingly, amazingly how many station it can pick this uh, this tube radio receiver it's uh, for me it's unbelievable yes it's true um, it has an external antenna i don't know what would happen if i would connect an external antenna <clears throat> to a transistor medium wave radio it might be the same it might be even better i don't know but for this radio with those three tubes uh, it's it's a very very nice surprise for me so the last step is to show you the schematic and the coil details as i promised here is the schematic i hope it can be read uh, i'll try to zoom a little bit uh, Hoping that the values will be easily readable. And the coil data are here. So that's the radio, that's the schematic. Um, it was a very nice surprise for me. And uh, if you like it, you can build it, you can. Uh, uh, use other tubes too uh, there are plenty of options so wish you all the best and good luck from romania 73